Hello, this is Transformers Fan G138, and I'm here with a video review of Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Optimus Prime. And I know a few of you who've watched my reviews before, I've said this guy was going to be the only Beast Hunters I figured I got. And to be honest, I was truthful when I said that until I f decided to break down and finally buy this guy last week. Um, and once I opened him up, my opinion changed of the Beast Hunters line pretty closely. I mean, I won't be getting a lot of them. Uh, I actually just picked up Predaking and Shockwave today, which I'll also be doing a review of. But, um, yeah. So, I really like this guy, and I guess I'm here to tell you why. Uh, first off, his truck mode is terrible. This vehicle form, it, it almost it almost seems to me like the vehicle form was an afterthought. Like, not really important. Which, I'm kind of getting that vibe a lot from the Shockwave, too. But, I'll get to that when I review it. So, I mean, the playability in robot mode is amazing. I, I love the robot mode of this guy, but the vehicle mode is kind of bad. Um, it does roll, uh, not so much on the surface, um, because these are, if you uh, give it a, just enough force, these wheels are just the plug wheels that fit in there and they free spin. Um, so these can pop off very easy. Um, be warned if you're giving this to children. I've, I mean, this is pretty large, but even so, um, just as a comparison, let's see if I can have a quarter around. Yeah, here. Here's a comparison with a quarter, right over the top of the wheel. It's, you know. Yeah, it, it's a large wheel, but even so, it seems a little, I don't know, unsafe almost. So, you want a scene where a wheel pops off and he runs off the road. It's easy to do on all, all of the wheels. It takes a little bit more pressure to get him back on than taking him off, but... I imagine if you go to the um, other ones in the series that also have the... Uh, peg feature uh, the like this you'll find that it uh, they do the same thing or similar that's something I do like about this figure he does not have the these type of wheels he does have a pinwheel a uh, pin inside the wheel pressed through the back here which is offers a lot more freedom of a spin uh, this just has more friction you can find these wheels on the R.I.D. What's his name? The doctor there. Um, I'm looking right at him. Knockout. Anyway, um, some of these wheels spin very freely. Like, this one spins very easily, and this one does not. It's just the tolerances. Okay, so, what I do like about this is his weapons store on him pretty easily. His Star Saber, which isn't the best, I mean, it's green, so it blends in with my uh, wall here. I would prefer blue, and in fact, the Japanese version of this includes blue plastic instead of green. And if I was into spending tr double to triple the amount of money on per figure... I would get this in imported. But uh, to be honest, there's very few things I buy from Japan. Usually only things that uh, are released in Japan only. Or that are really hard to find in the US that aren't, aren't as hard to find in the uh, Japan. Like, uh, for example, Cliff Jumper. Not Cliff Jumper. Um, wow. I'm getting my names all mixed up today. I don't normally do that. Wind Charger. Um, Wind Charger was way cheaper to import than he was to buy in the U.S. Just because he was cancelled early on. So, 
he does have paint apps here on the window. Eh, they're okay. They're yellow. They don't really match the green or blue windows, depending on whatever version. Uh, these, eh, they're okay. They're missile launchers. Um, they fire decently. They open up. They close. They fire either way. Eh, they're okay. They're neat. There's two of them, identical. Uh, so another feature of this mode and this figure, he's got wings. And these wings are pretty neat. I mean, in truck mode, they're kind of weak, but you know, whatever. You kind of get wings. There, uh, there's two wings, two wing blades per wing. So you can angle them any which way you want. I mean, they kind of look a real, r little bit ridiculous in vehicle form, but whatever. Um, kind of curious to see what his vehicle form looks like in the show, because I haven't showed it yet. But I really like his... I, I mean, I've seen the episode like four times that when this guy uh, showed up. It's the one episode of Prime I think I've watched four times. Um, I really like that episode. And the episodes leading up to it were pretty good. The show's pretty good, in general. Um, anyway, so we'll start with the uh, transformation now, because I've pretty much talked the vehicle form to death. Uh, start by popping this off the pegs here and here. They plug into the forearms. Next, unplug the forearms. And then you want to kind of disconnect these uh, claws first. They don't pop in very securely, but enough to mess up your figure if you're not careful. Um, and these come forward. Uh, you want to be very careful because there are peg holes here in robot mode for the missile launchers, but it's very thin plastic, and as you can see, kind of, maybe, sort of, uh, there's stress marks in this plastic already, and that's just from once. And the other side doesn't seem to have them. I don't know why one does and one other one doesn't, other than tolerances. One hole slightly bigger, slightly smaller, unmeasurably so, but enough to cause stress marks. So when the, when you fold these up, this plugs into this, or this plugs into this, I should say. So these fold together and pop together. And these kind of just hang around because we'll move those around a bit. This then just kind of sits here held into place by the pressure of this. Pop that out. Bring this up. It's kind of loose so it doesn't really matter. Rotate this whole thing around. Now it doesn't move. You want to grab the arms and rotate them around. These peg into place up here. This row, well, flip up the head and kind of tuck this up here, bring these down, bring this down, something like this. Yeah, I think that's right. I feel like this is wrong, but it actually might not be. Ah, yes. Sorry, these go like this, and this thing plugs in like this. It kind of fits this way, but it also, it's supposed to fit this way. There's nothing to peg it into, so it's hard to check, but yes, it does fit there, and I'm just curious of something. No, those don't fit up in there. Just testing some theory. Um, so this goes up like this, so this flat part is right up against the back of his neck. This comes down and around, and kind of loosely pegs onto the back there, like so. Sit him there for a second, adjust the camera. So, at this point his legs are almost always already done. We'll flip out the heels 
so you can stand here. Rotate the arms down. Bring these loose fitting arm or pieces of armor up, but not all the way up. So they're kind of hanging down a little bit. Come back here, fold these over, close them, fold them down. That pops into place. And we have Beast Hunters Optimus Prime in robot mode. It is awesome. I love this guy. Absolutely love him. I think I think as Optimus Prime, he's different. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, yeah. So, as far as motion goes, he's got a little bit in the feet due to the um, whatever. I They're pre-angled. So he's in a stance, though they don't move side to side or anything, but they're wide enough that you can get some decent poses. Uh, the knee is a ratchet joint. It goes not quite 90 degrees. Hmm. Up, round, out, double hinge, swivel just above the knee. It looks like it has a waist swivel, and honestly, it should have a waist swivel because these are two different pieces of plastic but it doesn't. It's got one piece, which is, it's like screwed in place there, so I don't know why they did that. It would have been just as easy. Probably for confusion, confusion during transformation that you don't want to turn this, but you want to turn this. Like, whatever. But that's my guess. Um, so, yeah. I mean, his legs rotate enough where you can kind of get a side-to-side -side motion going. Um, so yeah, his arms rotate. When his jetpack is folded up, it's hard to get the arm fully around, but minor nuisance. Uh, ratchet joint, hinge, hinged elbow, hands are on a swivel, which is nice. Um, his shoulder panels do move, so if you don't like them up, you can have them down, and, or, you can move them all the way up, so, if they're down like this, and you move his arms up, well, that happens. <laughs> Where did it go? There it is. That's only happened to me, like, once. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, you can move them out of the way of the arms, so then. It's never in the way of the motion. They they do move. Some people I notice like displaying it better like this. The show actually has it like this. I kind of like it like this personally. Um, that's just me. Uh, his wings rotate up and then down. Up and down. And then you got a couple options with the way to display the wings. You can do the small wing up top or the large wing up top. The directions specifically say lar large wing on the bottom, small wing on the top, which I think it looks better as personally just because of the design, but you can do it either way. So it's cool. Have this guy flying around like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. So, his Star Saber fits in his hand, which is always a nice feature for a sword. Uh, it's got decent movement, you know. You can really pose the sword. So it's cool. So you got some nice poses with the sword. I'm kind of curious to see if you'll get a sword back in the show, because it's currently MIA. His guns also fit in his hands can have them as crossbow type things or regular. Also, you can store them like so. So you can wield a sword and his guns at the same time. It's not my favorite, but it's doable. Personally, I like to have him hold the sword and the gun and use one of these as like a thruster on his jetpack. Which these do also plug into here where I said they cause stress marks. 
show that off real quick. Ah, there. And both, if you, you can put both of them on the sides. So it fills out its jetpacks more. And sometimes you launch the missile. What's nice about this, you can like open these up kind of a little bit for like thrusters. It's kind of neat. I mean, the missiles kind of sort of look like flames. Would have been cooler, like on the box art, they were translucent, and that would be cool if they were permanently translucent. But, alas, they're not. Um, he looks good with or without the missile launchers, so if you don't like them, you can th throw them in whatever. I think this is the one Transformers Prime Voyager toy that I don't mind his extras at all. I mean, they're pretty cool. Um, the only complaint I really have to the design is these spikes. I ain't really, they don't do anything for me, one way or the other. I, I don't care that they're there. It still looks nice both ways. I mean, personally, I would have liked those gone, but I'm not going to cut them off. I don't like them that bad. I don't dislike them that much. So, yeah. Also, his sword can store on his back, which is nice has a hard time unless you flip these wings around reaching back here and if you angle everything right he can almost grip his sword doesn't look so nice but hey whatever you can also st plug these guns into his wings kind of like have wing thrusters or something which is neat but not necessary so there's some cool playable features with this guy you know, it's nice. The translucent plastics are nice. I'd prefer them blue, but, you know. Just as a comparison here, here is next to Smokescreen for size. And for those of you who don't have very many Prime toys, here he is next to the Generations Jazz Mold. Not bad. Here he is with Classics Prime. Bit taller, but he is much lighter. This guy, well, take out the metal sword in this hand. And he still find this guy is much heavier than this guy. There, Although he's filled out, he's got backings on his legs. and um, But yes, you can find hollow parts if you look around, but most of it's filled in with other panels. So they're getting better at hollowing them out, but at the same time, covering it up, which they weren't doing a good job for for a while. Um, anyway, and lastly, here is a comparison with him with his predecessor. My least favorite Optimus Prime toy next to the universe spinny waist guy was just terrible. Um, yeah, not a great Optimus this is. I explained that in my review of this one. Effectively, this guy's replacing this guy on my shelf. Just so there's room for the others. Uh, not bad. I really like the new one versus this one. I don't have the first edition, so I can't comment on that. But I like this design better than this one. I mean, the show design's fine. If this looked like the TV show, this might be better. This looks like the TV show, and this is awesome. Not sure about the vehicle mode. Excellent vehicle form. This, I will say that, this has a decent vehicle form. Bad vehicle form, good vehicle form, bad robot mode, great robot mode. That's all there is to it. Um, also, of course, here's a small comparison with the original Prime in Megatron. And now here he is, next to New Prime. And like in the show, he is about the same size as Megatron, a little bit taller, more muscular. It looks like they can go head-to-head -head in a uh, fist fist match. Not that they couldn't before, but now it looks a little more evenly matched. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all I got for this review. Um, my recommendations are, if you can find them for retail price, I do not, would not recommend paying over $20 for them. Uh, I've got... I... I I refuse to pre-order any of the Transformers Prime stuff 
just because it's so expensive to pre-order things. I, I very readily pre-order the generation stuff because that stuff tends to go out of stock really fast and the stores don't stock it. Like, where these things appear in a TV show, they're more likely to get restocks and stocked to be first off. So, instead of having like one of Jazz, for example, there will be 15 of this guy. So, do not pre-order this guy at all. Don't pay extra. Unless you live in the middle of nowhere and have nowhere to buy Transformers, then you kind of don't have any options. Anyway, very good figure. Highly recommend it. If you like the Transformers Prime series, I pretty much only buy the characters in the show, but I really like this Prime toy. Much better than the other one, I might add. So, it's recommended. It's G138 approved. I like it. I enjoyed it when I bought it. I was a little nervous when I bought it. I'm like, yeah, am I going to like this guy? Am I, is, am I, am I going to find this is going to be a waste of 20 bucks like the first Prime or whatever? But... I bit the bullet and bought the Prime, and I liked it. And actually, I the other two I bought today are fantastic as well. I'm very, very impressed with uh, Predaking, because I thought I would hate it, but it actually turned out well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yes, if you have any questions about this Transformers Prime mold, please leave me a question down below, comment down below, and I will answer that. Or you can send me a message, PM me. So, without further ado, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed.